Look, I'll be the first to say that as an American, I'm not super well versed in the royal family. For me, if it's not about the NFL, big guns, or cheeseburgers, I have no interest. However, I am pretty well versed in South Park, and after I saw the teaser for the new episode and realized it would be about the royal family, I made sure I was caught up on all the drama. After last week's episode was so great, I was very, very excited for this one. I tried to keep my expectations low because you really never know with modern South Park, but after seeing how they were able to recapture that classic South Park feeling in the last episode, I couldn't help but be excited for this one. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to watch the episode when it aired because I had to go out into the dumb real world and see all of my dumb real life friends and have a great time. Ugh, it was horrible. But the next morning, while sipping on a liquid IV, not a sponsor, I was able to watch the episode. And upon watching it, once again, I was pleasantly surprised. I was a bit fearful that the previous episode was a fluke and they wouldn't be able to maintain the quality for another episode but they were able to capture that old South Park feel for the second episode in a row, and they did so in a manner that felt effortless. With a lot of modern South Park, the topics they cover tend to feel kind of forced. Like, they feel like they have to make fun of whatever is happening on the news, not that they want to make fun of it. But with this episode tackling the royal family, it felt like it was made from a place of true passion. Now, when I say the royal family, I, of course, am referring to the Canadian royal family, not the British one. They are completely unrelated, and as we all know, British people aren't real anyways. They're just old urban legends like Santa Claus or Finland. So of course this episode is making fun of the Canadian royal family, as is tradition. Now, you may be asking, whose side are they on? Does Kyle ever get to play video games with his friends? Does Cartman really still live in that hot dog? And where would I place this in my South Park ranking list? The answer to those questions will be revealed throughout the video. You didn't really think I would make the same joke twice in a row, right? The episode opens with everyone's favorite Canadian, Ike, mourning the death of the Queen of Canada. It is immediately clear the direction this episode is heading. Kyle tries to convince him to move on so that he can use the computer to play Warhammer, but Ike is resistant. As the funeral continues, the prince and his wife show up to the chagrin of everyone else. The prince and his wife share an uncanny resemblance to Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, and if you read the title, you can probably figure out that this is no accident. At school the next day, the boys are wondering why Kyle never got on to play Darktide. Kyle explains the drama of the Canadian royal family, but the boys don't really seem to care since they just played without him. They've already leveled up quite a bit, so much that they were able to get some sweet cosmetics. We got some sweet drip, dude. Sweet drip, dude. Even Token unlocks some sweet drip, and this makes Kyle pretty upset. When Butters sees this, he talks about the importance of one's image and how everyone has a brand. In fact, Butters has been working on his image through a brand management company, something that he encourages Kyle to do as well. So he takes him to the company, whose name is... Um... Interesting? I'm gonna be honest, I have no clue what this name is in reference to. My only guess is that it's a branding company but has a horrible name, so it's like bad branding. I don't know. If you know, let me know in the comments. Meanwhile, over in Canada, the prince and his wife go on a morning talk show to try to clear up their actions as of late. They walk onto the set holding signs declaring their desire for privacy, while also chanting about their desire for privacy. Of course, this is on a morning talk show that will be shown to millions of people, but, you know, that's besides the point. The host talks about how the prince has written a memoir discussing how hard his life has been growing up in the royal family and literally living as royalty. The book, of course, is titled rather appropriately. And now you've written all about it in your new book, where? Now, of course, this is in no way related to the memoir that Prince Harry released last month, entitled Spare. Again, there is no relation between these two characters and these real people. When the prince tries to explain, his wife cuts him off to talk about how she encouraged him to write the book and that she hates journalists. The anchor mentions that they did write a book reporting on the lives of the royal family, leading to the only logical conclusion. So you're a journalist. The anchor then goes on to question the logic of claiming to want privacy despite the prince's wife having her own TV show and seemingly doing whatever it takes to stay in the public eye. This enrages the couple and they storm out to get started on their worldwide privacy tour. They then travel around the entire world proclaiming their need for privacy to literally anyone that will listen. They also slid in a little reference to one of the most iconic episodes from the show, as you can see the character Tad from the episode Aspen in the background. Dan Marsh, 
<laughs> Stan Darsh is more like it. <laughs> uh, Darsh. Now, obviously, I don't have to point out the irony in going on a world tour to promote your need for privacy, and this whole sequence is definitely one of the highlights of the episode. But remember, this is not based on any real-life events or anything like that. On an unrelated note, did you know that Harry and Meghan have done countless interviews on both British and American shows and starred in their own six-part Netflix documentary since leaving the royal family despite their claim of wanting to be left alone by the press to live a private life? Wow, what an odd coincidence. Back at the brand management company, Kyle is working on developing what exactly his brand will be. None of the suggestions really seem to fit his vibe though, but the employee reminds him of what they're really looking for here. Okay, well remember there, Kyle, it's not so much about who you are as much as it is about what people are attracted to. You may also have noticed that all these brands seem to include victim as a trait. That's interesting. Anyways, Harry and Mi I mean, the prince and his wife, decide to move to the quiet little mountain town known as South Park, where they can finally live a normal, private life. They move into Cartman's old house, well, I guess that answers the hot dog question. They start living their private life as normal citizens by moving in via private jet. Which I mean makes sense, you know, every time I want to be discreet when traveling, I just tape a banner to the side of my car that reads, do not bother me, I'm an internet superstar, and usually I'm left alone. So the prince then begins to play the drums in the middle of the road, as is tradition, and when Kyle sees this, he reminds him to give him some privacy. At school, Kyle is ranting to his friends about how the royal family moved in across the street and how obnoxious they're being, but they really don't seem to care, discussing how they once again had fun without him on Darktide. Kyle then tries to implement his new brand, discussing how he is a reliable, punctual, fun-loving victim. All of these traits are, of course, the exact opposite of what he has been in recent times, but as the commercial plays from the company who shall not be named, we see that it doesn't matter, since they tell us what it really means to have a brand. And with brand management, you can make sure others see you the way they want to see you. Meanwhile, the prince and his wife are going to even more absurd lengths to assure that their message of privacy is heard, and Kyle gets fed up with it, calling the police. The police don't really care, and when Kyle tries to tell them to keep it down, well, you can probably guess how they respond. You ever heard of a thing called privacy? To the annoyance of all the other boys, Kyle will not stop talking about the prince and his wife during school. Eventually, Stan decides to let Kyle know what everyone was thinking, and I think the show did a really good job of capturing the general attitude most people have towards this situation over here in the States. We just kind of don't care about some dumb prince and his stupid wife. Kyle literally cannot stop himself from talking about them, and the rest of the boys just leave. He goes back to working on his brand, and comes up with the perfect brand for himself. Thick-skinned, super cool, nothing bothers him. Oh, and a victim. You know, I've seen a lot of praise for this episode because of the royal family plot, but I personally think that this side plot is really effective in making its point. Near the end, they reveal how it's intertwined with the other plot, and we'll get to that, but the entire idea of branding applies to almost every celebrity. With the celebrity tabloid culture we see, especially in the US, celebrities are realizing more and more just how important their image is. Of course, this image doesn't actually have to be a reflection of who you are in any way. It just has to be appealing to the most amount of people possible. Now obviously this is nothing new, but with the rise in entire companies whose sole purpose is to manage the brands of celebrities, it has become a lot more transparent. And as the episode points out, there is nothing more important in marketing your brand than being a victim. Being a victim is what's in right now. It's the hot new trend, and if you can convince everyone that you are a victim, then your brand could grow larger than you ever thought possible. You don't actually have to be a victim, you just have to make people think you are. It doesn't even matter how privileged you are. You could be a wealthy, handsome, multi-talented Grammy Award winning artist, but guess what? You're a victim too. Oh, you grew up as a potential heir to the throne in a royal family that is worth billions of dollars and spent your life traveling the world? Doesn't matter. You're a victim. You see, it doesn't matter how privileged you are. With the right people on your team and a little bit of practice, you can convince the world that you are a victim. This whole subplot is hilarious and scathing, and it's a big part of my enjoyment of this episode. When Kyle gets home, his front door is plastered with magazine covers of the prince's wife. Now, remember, this is absolutely not supposed to be representing anyone in real life. But quick side note, have you seen how many magazine covers Meghan Markle has done? If I didn't know better, I'd say she doesn't really want privacy at all. 
Hmm. Kyle, realizing that they just want attention, decides to ignore it. The wife sees this as an attack on her, since she is an ethnic woman and therefore a victim. So the prince heads over there to set the record straight. He decides to do so by rubbing his meat all over Kyle's window. And it's blue for some reason? Okay, that's pretty weird. Um, anyways, did you know that Prince Harry dedicates a rather substantial part of his memoir to describing how his genitalia were severely frostbitten on a trip to the Arctic? Fascinating stuff. Kyle doesn't take the bait, and this makes the prince and his wife upset, making an ominous declaration. He's not gonna get away with this. Back at school, Kyle has fully embraced his new brand, showing just how cool and uncaring he is. He wants to thank Butters for his help, and when he finds him, he is getting his face beaten in by Bebe. When Butters says that he was just acting strong and assertive to embrace his brand, Kyle takes him back to the brand management company to get it sorted out. Meanwhile, the prince and his wife are already there, discussing how they need to change their brand to get back at Kyle for being a spy. Of course, they've already had brand management services from a young age, and the employee is able to dig up their old brands in the database. Sorority girl, actress, influencer, victim. Yeah, that's totally me. Just then, Kyle and Butters arrive, and the prince and his wife are upset, saying that Kyle is obsessed with them. This makes Kyle have a realization about what this company is doing to their clients. He discusses how these companies are just turning people into products, and that you should want people to like you for being you, not for being who they want you to be. The prince realizes what Kyle is saying and agrees, discussing how a normal life is really possible for them if they choose to focus on what matters instead of their brand. And what matters is what's on the inside. His wife doesn't seem very receptive to this message, so he tries to take a little bit of a closer look. Hello? Everyone decides that they need to leave, except for the wife. When the prince sees this, he decides that he needs to stick up for himself and leaves anyway, letting her stay in her shallow lifestyle. Back at Kyle's house, Ike is still crying over the queen, and Kyle begins to tell him to get over it, but he's learned his lesson, and instead tells him that it's okay if things get to him because that's who he is. The boys stop by Kyle's house and invite him to get offline for a while and finally touch grass, so they go to play basketball. As they're playing, the prince shows up and asks if he can play, so he grabs his drum set and begins to play, showing that even with his change of heart, he still isn't quite ready for a quiet lifestyle. We don't need to be a brand, do we? As I said in the beginning, I wasn't sure if this new season would be able to keep the same level of quality from the previous episode, but I really enjoyed this episode. It really does feel like Matt and Trey have recaptured a feeling that has been missing in so much recent South Park, as these episodes have maintained that social relevance that South Park is known for without taking it too far. I think they've found the perfect balance of social commentary and pure comedy that many of the recent seasons have lacked since there have been so many episodes that have just felt extremely on the nose with the commentary to the point where it just felt repetitive, but other episodes just seemed like the commentary was buried under so many layers of metaphors that you would need to read a few reddit posts to even understand what they were trying to say. I didn't like this episode quite as much as the previous one, but again, I think it was better than anything from the previous season. If they're able to maintain this level of quality for the rest of the season, this will undoubtedly be one of the best in years. Placing it in my ranking list, this one is going to be another A tier episode, going in the 103rd spot. Oh, and another quick update on the ranking list, uh, some exciting news, you know. I have rewatched Pip a few times since the previous episode, and I am happy to tell you that its ranking will be remaining the same. It still sucks.